This is my talk about the Grand Prix. I am. Oh man, I keep a feeling that you're going to have. Um, so, a breakdown of my talk. Uh, I'm going to start by talking a little bit about photogrammetry. Uh, it, it isn't really the focus of my talk, though, even though I play with it. Um, I'll be talking more about fundamentals of modeling and texturing. Then I'll, I'll dovetail into questions. Um, about me. Um, <clears throat> On the left there is a little indie game, it's my first game. I just saw some more images on here. Where it's at. Um, I wouldn't say it's <laughs> Oh man. Hey guys. Um, Um, I am the creator of a historic town. I'm one of the hosts of a podcast called Frontier Gamer. It's fantastic. It's a bi weekly. Hey guys, it's going. Are there other people coming? I mean, I wouldn't go on with you, bro. <laughs> um, I am also an artist at Granny. Um, let's talk about this a little bit. I've been the. Uh, for a long ass time. Started out making a lot of the early environments. Um, <coughs> characters, monsters, effects. Uh, I've been there for almost a decade. So, a very long time. Um, when photogrammetry came out, we kind of jumped on it just to see what it was. The whole photorealism was very appealing. Video game limitations. I'm going to start the talk. Um, so this, this is a, uh, a clip from 2016 GBC. For those of you that don't know, photogrammetry is just the use of photographs to make measurements, and in our case, generating models and textures from those measurements. The basic process works like this. You take a series of pictures, you align those pictures in a photo scan software, in this case, AggieSoft. You generate a point cloud. From that point cloud, you generate a identity mesh, high-res mesh. And there you can project textures. Um, so this guy, uh, the idea of photogrammetry is awesome, like photorealistic, high poly missions. Um, but the act of doing it is very tedious. <laughs> this guy does. <laughs> Hunt, like, uh, that rock there that he showed, oh, I'll just go to the next slide. Um, this is the kind of stuff I'll be talking about. So, there's roughly <coughs> 30 images right there, which I would argue is not very much. You end up having a thing of areas that are not built in areas that are not um, captured in, in, in photos are uh, left blank. And the technique used to then fill in those areas is not it's not advanced at all. Um, for example, Photoshop has a content aware fill, um, which is the most advanced like pixel filling thing that I've seen. In, a, in an application, this thing will simply uh, grab values around this area and then lead it to, to the other area. It will just linear into the place. Uh, so, it's <coughs> about the ground for being really cool. But then you see the kind of garbage rock. <laughs> one, one cool thing about the sort is that. Um, they, you know, Battlefront came out, I believe, last year. Um, and they, they're probably the most successful game 
that uses photogrammetry. Um, and here, the big rocks to 4K textures, which is kind of crazy. Um, 55 megabytes of memory is a lot. Um, the the takeaway was, uh, don't do this. <laughs> <laughs> you wanna you wanna use detail maps. You want you want to um, the technique here is get a nice uh, normal map at a much lower resolution onto your base mesh. By the way, I'm going to assume you guys know what polygons are and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, you have basically two normal maps overlaid over a low poly in game mesh. And then you get a result like this. You, you can run the second normal map as a detail map, it would, it would be tiling with inside of it. Sorry, dude, my second <laughs> um, And yeah, you get this kind of result. So I'm just going to toggle back and forth. If you look over to that left above the dice logo, you'll see the kind of fidelity, like um, the video compression, thanks to YouTube, <laughs> makes it look like unnoticeable though it's so subtle. Um, photogrammetry, um, it hasn't really advanced. Uh, we started, uh, I started paying attention to it back in 2013. Um, it's, Pretty much been the same since then. Um, this came out at SIGGRAPH this year, and what it is the, the bottom image. Um, it is a dividing tool. So the, the big hurdle of the photograph was, you know, if you had a nice overcast day, <coughs> then you may get good images like that aren't. Um, you know, shadows just haven't ruined your photos. The technology here is that you feed the same photo um, with or without shadows, and you can feed it into uh, this demo was actually done within uh, Unity using a program called Reality Capture. And yeah, it just what it did was it extracted the lighting information from the processed image. And it, and it gave you the textures on the right and a HDRI image, which was pretty cool. I said that I, I told a programmer at work about that, and he was not safe. He actually thought it was like common in the program tree. This is a uh, this is a shoe I worked on <laughs> back back in the skating shoes before. Um, so I hung on to it. It's very old. Uh, it has a lot of nice words yet. These next few slides is me doing experimentations of like playing around with what the software could do and, and sort of like seeing what kind of detail you get from it. So this image here, um, it's about 150 images uh, completely around the uh, this should. Um, one thing I realized is that photogrammetry is limited by the images that you give it. And what, what I mean is, if you have a look in these um, crevices here, the one here, um, you guys might not know these shoes, but uh, like just just pay attention around here. Um, this is a raw scan. This here. Is like with an artist intention. This is what um, the guys that do photogrammetry work at work, I told them to treat photogrammetry, these high resolution measures, as base measures. They are basically, you know, they are a starter. Then they should never be viewed as the final high quality mesh that you then use to project textures from. They're, they're in the base. Um, this is another example of what I mean. <clears throat> the the values within these cracks here, yeah, yeah. um, it's it's found everywhere. You get it. You get it with um, very high white values as well as very dark black values. They seem to clip detail, 
And so you don't really get a very good result once you see what is the software for these images. And so that is a raw uh, process thing. Again, same should have come up with the images. And these are huge images. These are <clears throat> these are tips, um, uncompressed. Uh, I don't know, they're like five meters by <coughs> or maybe maybe even ten. You can see our face is over here. Um, this little washout. Again, before, after. This is like kind of it's like rocks. I was, I was having this conversation yesterday. Rocks will always <coughs> and forever will look like rocks. <laughs> you win a game, nine times out of ten, if you go to a photo talk, they will show you a rock. It's because <laughs> it's, it's because the rocks are just um you can't say that the spot looks wrong. Like it's not no character. There are no landmarks that are discernible to other people. There are no things like Oh wait a minute! This doesn't look like a rock. It's got an elbow. <laughs> it's just uh, it's not a thing. So rocks are—you can get away with a lot of detail rocks. Um, okay, this thing. This is a scan from a company called Ten Twenty Four. The left is a—it's a raw scan page. These are like test things that you can download from the website. It's kind of cool to. Let's pick that up just to kind of see what they're doing. Uh, <coughs> the guys at 1024, um, they kind of went all in on photogrammetry. And what I mean is, uh, they brought, I think, like 170 Canon cameras, like $1,000 cameras. Their, their capture setup is like 200K easy. Um, plus, they have just tech guys um, capturing this kind of stuff. Um, so you'll see that the the head garbage. Um, <laughs> you can't you can't use it. Now, and for the longest time, I um, I was looking at this and wondered how they have, because they provide both these models. They call this one on the left the um, the raw model, and the one on the right the the clean model. And I was wondering how the hell they pulled it off with like. Assuming that they had tools, I, I thought that they had some automated process. You would think, um, or if you're like me, you would think that they had um, some kind of process that, you know, cleaned up that thing on the way. There are a lot of problems, by the way, when you uh, work with a character. For example, when you model a character in Maya, for example, you have like reflection. <laughs> For example, you don't. If you get a guy to send a boot, his eye may be off. Like, do you see what I'm saying? Like, they are not. People are not symmetrical, like they are in say the Um What's cool about this is that on Tuesday this week, uh, 1024 released this <coughs> this image. And um, they have a breakdown. So this is it, yeah. And um, <coughs> I'm not going to play this whole thing. I'm going to encourage you guys to, to check it out, though. I, I'll share in a second with. But you can see that there's a shitload of work. But into the the, the photogrammetry amounts to like it gives you proportions. It will give you a kind of usable diffuse. Um, uh, I, I'm going to stop this, but it's it's pretty bad. Well, it, it's not it's not bad. <laughs> it's bad in the sense that. Um, Photogrammetry is not that silver bullet that we all kind of want. Uh, I, I think I'm, I'm pretty soft. I'm going to speed up a little bit. These are an asset that we had in Park Hotel, created in early 2014. This is something I worked on. 
We don't have detail maps. We are very limited by polygons and moving space. This is the raw asset from Tibishu. Um What I'll say about it is people are so into photogrammetry that um, they, they want to do things like capture cards, like entire whatever card you want. Right? Um, but when you when you have photogrammetry and you want to capture something that's shiny, it's like this is not cool. Like it's very difficult to capture shiny objects. Turbo squid has photo real cards for like five dollars. It is not even viable. I would not even if someone with a very expensive that fifteen twenty four one for Sienna card. Um, it, it really wouldn't be to prove anything because the technology is so garbage. You can get something that's very clean, you know, better real from here for much cheaper. Right, and that's, that's service we, we use these guys a lot. Um, it's considered like the Wild West. You really want to do your research when you download the new thing from this. Um, this is a closer look at, at the asset. This is Brawler. The texture map is a 16k texture map. Um, <coughs> there's plenty of detail in this. And, and the thing on the left is like just a standard Maya creative sphere. Um, and what it illustrates is that just, just check out the deformation like in, in the holes right now. That all floats out in the middle. The same is happening here. I, I would not unwrap anything like this. You have like the sandy areas are cool. Um, but there is way more surface area in the actual rock. So, like, to give order, that thing is like the thing that you want, and it has arguably less resolution than the sand around it. Um, all right, so we've got to get active. This is how we deal with it. And this is time for. I was hoping someone else would be here, but this is what we need. Uh, first of all, congratulations on the Fox engine. It looks really good. And oh wait, I'm going to set this up a little more. Um, all right, we've got a high poly asset. How do we get man going? Uh, 2013, they just showed off the Fox engine. And this is what's the, the second question is, Photoscan looks really cool, but how much detail do you have to sacrifice when you make that model, which is hundreds of thousands of polygons, into an actually in-game asset? I understand. Let me go ahead and repeat the question if yeah, anybody. Yeah. Uh, he's asking when uh, generating a model in PhotoScan, it comes with tons of polygons. How much detail do we have to sacrifice when actually getting it in the game? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Good. We use a normal map. Game uh, game. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes, normal maps. <coughs> a, a big thing. A, a, a couple of mistakes follow. And um, like the guy asking the question just. I, I think it doesn't understand what normal maps are. But yeah. in order and make the normal map in order to uh, overcome this limitation. Okay. Oh, okay. So uh, if you didn't hear the guy the guy says what what about polygon count? He, he's hung up on this um, this huge loss of detail in a you know, in converting a high poly to a low poly to be normal. You just can't get it. Uh, these images illustrate the, the loss of detail that we get. <clears throat> so, pay attention to the silhouette. All the areas on the inside are accurate. The only reason they kind of look off is because of the cavities inside, you know, that they, they have lots of detail as well. Areas like this that are uh, more flat towards the camera, you get this weird V artifact here. Um, so if you really want to check out this kind of stuff in game, you want to always sort of look at the edge of these um, models. You can see that, <clears throat> you know, going from a 450 megabyte OBJ to this, to, to six megabytes is a huge win. Another closer look at the solar. Um, 
Uh, between two and three is a massive game change. Like, uh, that's that's when all maps came out. It literally changed everything. Um, that character, you know, that, that came out in 2008 and it's still pretty good. Um, I don't know how you guys feel about it. Um, it's still got some tools. There's a decimated model on the left. I'm, I'm going to talk about that a little more. These, I think, were intended <clears throat> mainly just to get artists sculpting with easy geometry in ZBrush. But then the photogrammetry community came in, and I think they got this idea of like, quads are really cool. ZBrush can automatically uh, re apologize my asset. Um, and for some reason, a lot of people are using this tool to uh, make base missions or rocks, which is very weird. Um, the reason is you get, a, you get a lot of loss in detail when you use that. Um, and it, it's cool here, it's kind of good. This is not acceptable. Like, if, if someone gave me this, I would, I'd be curious. Um, the, the gloves suck, and so this weird quad in his crotch. Um, this would be a normal map. Uh, John, I think you agree. <laughs> yeah, not <laughs> Uh, this, this is a coin I'm going to phrase. I, I saw George's talk yesterday. <coughs> coin so many phrases, some um, coin this one. Uh, polygon resolution. We all know about uh, pixel resolution. Uh, so when we look at a character, you know that if you're a character model, you typically give the eyeball resolution much more than, say, the face. You give much more to the face than you would, say, to the body. Um, what I'm coining for a polygon resolution, and this is something that you may want to use when you're when you, you don't know what scale to work on for, say, a mobile game. Say you've got your hero character, and then you want to make other assets. You can then use your hero character as a base as like this is the hero model. Everything should be much less resolution than this character, right? and then you can make geometry in a, in a very simple way. Uh, so it's broad. See that you know the average polygon density is you know two and a half times that of the hero character. Uh, here's a, a few things to look out for. <clears throat> um, when you decimate a thing, I'm assuming that you you get a rock and you want to make a, a low poly base mesh. <coughs> um, the decimation. It really doesn't care about uh, silhouette, things that uh, we shouldn't care about. And so, so you really need to go in and check for these areas. Um, it'll typically do this kind of thing. It'll find an edge. Imagine this green shape here is the high poly, and then the red is the low poly. Those areas are just going to have this really high setting. So, you know, go in there, add some more geometry. That edge will work a little better. Uh, poles are typically uh, garbage. Sorry, <laughs> um, the circle illustrates. This is something I do. I don't know of other people that do this kind of thing. But uh, if you have a large mesh, you know, if you work on a high high resolution mesh in ZBrush, top again, my it's it's live, and every point created uses that mesh as a reference, so you end up placing point on it. So what the top image, is, image shows something that comes out of the, uh, the application. And what I do is I usually inflate these edges just so it's more, uh, the values are more mid, rather than having to increase the so middle. See what I'm saying? Here's an example of <clears throat> some rocks we had outsourced. This is for a guide that I've got seen that is kind of explains my workflow. So you just make something really quick. You check for areas like this. This is what I was talking about before with the, um, the low poly geometry. You know, you want to add edges in the silhouette. 
to capture this image. And, you know, they try, like, regular decimation or reducing in, in my tends to result in weird triangulation. So you want to check this kind of stuff. Um, now this, this image here kind of shows we're going to use a normal map for this. These areas are completely flat. Well, pretty much flat compared to this. There is very little silhouette change in these areas. Um, so they don't need to be as in because there is no real change in, in that silhouette. Uh, same same thing there. Um, one thing that I always push for in Path is that um, assets um, that are grounded like this, we tend to reduce geometry um, and quality just because it's not really perceptible just without a game camera. So we tend to put a lot more detail closer to the camera and, and just further away. I'm going to be referring back to this slide a little later. <coughs> it's a, this is an image from Quixel's website. Um, apparently it's good to have um, all your shells the same scale. Um, I'm not going to because the one on the right is horribly bad, so I'm not going to spend it. But uh, you could you could argue, <laughs> I'm not going to, that the one on the right is OK. Um, you, what I'm trying to say here, and you want to be conscious of it when you make your own game assets, is that you want to put more detail in the areas that you want to show off. You don't, do not treat every shell the same, because they're not viewed the same. Um, of course, all the compositors are. This, this model was provided by them. I had the very fun job of drawing great paint on it. Um, but what this image shows is that we really had to pick and choose where we wanted to uh, give detail. So a lot of the, um, you know, the guy at the top had much more resolution than the, the assets at the bottom. You can see that the entire tub right there. Is mirrored. We did not care about it. And and if I show you a shot of the back, you'll see that there's virtually no like the shells in the back are maybe a fifth of what you're seeing at the um, the, the mid here. Uh, this was very fun to do. It was. Uh, if you guys aren't using substance painter, if you're an artist, you can clearly have to get it. Um. Alright, you guys. I was hoping that would be here. <laughs> because the, this top right image, I, I don't think he knows that we can we can support one by four ratio pixels when he commits pixels like that. <laughs> on, on the left, these are default unwrapped. If I happen to grab arms and legs and just do your standard Maya unwrap. That's kind of what you get, and whenever I see that, it's a thing of, uh, one, it's wasteful. Um, you really need to take into consideration that, you know, maybe that five won't be seen. So maybe I could, you know, reduce that shell and get some more detail out. Um, if you, this bottom right image, if you remember that, uh, that rock, that I first talked about, where the surface area was kind of unwrapped that way, you would never do anything like this. This is a huge number. The, the top of the head has more resolution than the actual face. Just a uh, bad on that. Uh, this, this is a pretty much a crazy bump convert with no polish. It's, it sucks. I, I think you can get away with it, and we sort of have in some areas. <laughs> but I, I'm very much against it. You end up, these workflows are very Photoshop-based, and you don't have any 
get into. Um, this one on the right, um, the, the guy who created it isn't longer with us. Um, but he came um, into Grindr with the mindset of, I'll make an exit, I'll unwrap the whole thing entirely, and submit these, these models, which is like standard, I think that's the kind of workflow you learn in university. But again, <clears throat> these are complete mirrors of these. <laughs> there is, you know, you, you only see one of these sides at a time. You can mirror these. Um, uh, if, if I was to do the chassis, I would, you know, remove this. And the, the gradients are really bad. The baking on that right now. It's really not good. Um, large gradients. <laughs> The, the gradients are really bad because um, it shows the inability of not using uh, smoothing groups on your whiteboarding edge. Uh, th this one's a complete disaster as well. I was hoping that the artist that made that would be here. <laughs> but again, it's the, uh, it's the same thing that was on the other um, slide. These are these could be mirrored. Yeah. A lot of these shells right here can be mirrored, so you can uh, reduce uh, can reduce a lot of the the uh, the amount there. This is like the feature of the style. Like these these cracks, these really sh you know they're getting less than a less than a quarter of the UV space. And, and what happens is. Now that it's like that, that text map needs to be above a one pair text map just to like have these working details here. Again, not cool. Uh, this one here is the first, like one of these first photogrammetry assets that we had outsourced. Pretty rough. Um, looking back on it, I would have asked him to do this uh, very differently. Um, if you guys check out the Zebra Summit that happened every year, I think one the, the next one's coming up pretty soon. This was last from last year. This shows how Naughty Dog does their face textures. Um, it's interesting to keep in mind that, like, look how much of the UV space the face gets. They do not care about the sides and the top of the head. Um, you know, next, okay. They, they don't care about distortion. Distortion is good. You should be looking at this as an example, but I think it's Here's another slide. <clears throat> now what's interesting about this is that this is different to this, and um, I think they must treat their hero characters a little different. What I, the part that uh, stood out for me was the chin area. But I think because this guy has a beard, that they're able to flatten it out entirely and uh, you know, not give him not not give his face UV to chin resolution. But I think for hero characters you must do that kind of thing. Uh my first is. <clears throat> um if you've seen that episode of The Simpsons, it's very good. I, I think this is like a common artist thing. Where if you're drawing, if you were to draw someone, you kind of like bring them down to like four uh, shapes, and then you go ahead and work those shapes up. So I do this kind of thing. Uh, that thing on the right, that, that UV shell is. We're doing a thing with our character classes um, where we're using a universal base mesh for a lot of them. Uh, there are a lot of reasons for this. I'm hoping for a uh, talk from the from the team. Yes. Um, next year, uh, I'll briefly touch on it. This is something I put together. Um, there are a lot of problems with that shell on the right, such as you know, the, the back of the head. For some reason, I gave a lot of uh, resolution. Um, after. After putting this talk together, I realized there were the problems with that first UV unwrap I, I did. And so I, you know, the old one's on the left and the old one's on the right. 
this kind of stuff, this splitting collision is not, there's no reason for that. Um, you basically just create a scene with it, you know, could, uh, what, where you could have had it merged. Um, what I'll say about distortion is that it was very important back in the day when we texted in Photoshop to unwrap shells one to one, like directly from the, uh, the mesh. Just because you, you know you wanted to paint details and you wanted it to match one to one. Now that we're texturing a substance paint, it's not an issue anymore. If you want to paint on a certain point of your model, like you just do it in the viewport, the sort of thing. There is an issue though <clears throat> that I realized after putting that together, and it is that you can't get away with, for example, this this shell right here is the of other legs, and they changed the whole bunch because we felt that the chest would get more resolution, uh, well, could get more resolution, um, and that the thigh wouldn't actually be seen all that much. Um, that was our <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm going to talk about this film. Um, there is way more resolution in the front of the chest than there is in the, in the, in the on the back. So this entire section here is much less got this way. Even though the the body is like a complete a barrel shape thing. Um, if you guys happen to be a here at Stop Your Say shirt off this guy. Um, so this is Testing the uh, texture resolution out in different sizes. You can kind of see it. I, I think 512 is sort of what we're going to go for. If you look at the image on the left, if you look at the eyeballs of it, you can kind of see it break down, especially around the uh, bags. That, that one on the right, it kind of shows that you know, we, we prioritize. The uh, the head shells, so we wanted uh, well, it's just much larger. So like, we could get away with two fifty six uh, textures for for this main character. We probably won't, but but we could. That's the uh, the image that Eric showed yesterday. Um, these guys are very exciting. It's really cool to work with them. I realized, by the way putting these slides together that for the longest time I'd, be, I'd been telling the guys at work that I didn't work on the guy on the I I think I haven't read this. I'm going back to the, the rocks that I put that at the start. These are the kind of shells I put together. And the pixels UV shell utilization was very important and uh, I was pretty happy with them. I'm trying to use a whole shell. You can kind of see, well, you can see distortion in this area. Um, well, if I was to redo it, I would have, I would have uh, removed a lot more resolution at the bottom and kept more, kept more of the top. But if these were up there, I see it probably. That's how the basement came out. Or um, so that's good asset. And the final end game asset. And then this little gif on the, <coughs> on the right there is an approximate end, end game scale. Very good, sir. And you can kind of see it's a pretty accurate representation of the uh, rocks. All right. These guys, um, this is Quixel again. And they provide, they've got this whole like, 3D asset suite. Um, they're meant to be like some professional scanning thing. <coughs> um, they, they look really cool. Uh, these guys you take the scan, put it into Unreal, post process the shit out of it, <laughs> capture these images. Um, but, you know, the closer look at, at these. And so it kind of shows that you know, these leaves are like, 
that's not even noticeable. This is very difficult to work with these large data sets to, to remove that in game would well in, in ZBrush is a hell of a lot of work. Um, so I'm not a big fan of what it's all uh, this is what they give you as well, these uh these logs. Again, garbage you these uh, pretty okay, this, this is massive but it's gonna be okay. What they also do is they they provide different logs. Um, I you you really only want to pick up photogrammetry for the base asset because we don't even look at these logs. They're so garbage. Um, so they try to reuse the albedos and stuff. So all, all the shells kind of say the same. I want to let's show you this quickly. Watch this shell uh, like come together. It's, it's because they're trying to use the same shells. Oops. <laughs> um, all right. All right. Um, so, so that's rocks um, and photogrammetry. It is very, very limited. This slide is to say, if you're an artist, you should be an artist. You should be able. You should have the ability to create things from nothing. George, I'm hoping the panel talks about this a little bit. Uh, so just being not like not held back by any restrictions. Um, this is a huge thing. I'm sure you can have a time talk talking about imagination. Um, Racking up. <clears throat> Photogrammetry is limited. Um, the geometry reducing tools are very. The only ones with anything decent is ZBrush, and it's mainly for stopping memory. Uh, so, well. That that the point is more understand what the 3D application does and then kind of kind of use it. Um, understand what it can do on you know other applications. Pretty good. Um, good UVs are ungraded. <clears throat> um, I had a look at an art test very recently and. Um, a lot of these technical things I'm talking about now contribute to that final thing that they submit. What I mean is, the art set was pretty good, um, but a lot of the technical things this, this person failed on, it in the end made the submission garbage because of the lack of resolution of those things. It could be much better, but you cannot put much more detail into a badly unwrapped model. It's not possible. Um, that last point is just a thing I'm going to leave there. I have one thing to, to leave you guys with. This is again from the uh, pixel I just ran. I'm not sure how. Can we get the thumb? I think this is. Okay. I think this is a very destructive comment. <laughs> I mean, is that really empowering our future generations here? I'd like to change that to this. So that, guys, that, that, that really, really spoke to me. To the point where, when I was trying to find that clip, I actually thought the guy said it. Um, yeah. So I, I very much uh, feel like those in this room that can, can teach, same as looking at you, <laughs> must teach. Do, do we have time for this? Cool. Yes. What would you most like to see improved with photogrammetry tools, and do you think it's even worth investing the time? No. <laughs> <laughs> like that answer. Uh, light shield is interesting, but it, again, it's huge data sets, huge points, way more processing. Uh, I haven't played around with those cool laser scanners, but again, if you want to make a video game asset, it's a whole nother ball game. You need reusability, you want flexibility. Um, if I go to this, this here, okay, she is uh, the beanie is photogrammetry, uh, the face is, I'm going to say like 10% photogrammetry, 90% like artisan dimension. 
the jacket is completely background tree. If you now wanted to put that in the game and do this, you know, to break this thing, um, you're, you're thinking of, you know, a couple weeks worth, depending on your ability. Um, what I tend to tell people, and we have these pretty cool conversations at work, is that if you want to see what video games are doing, look to the largest industries, like the, the largest and most successful companies. And uh, Naughty Dog is not double down on folks on cyber geometry. That they are, uh, they very much embrace substance design and the painter. Um, by the way, we are looking for someone who is very skilled in substance designer. Uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe you guys talk to people, but. We want people that can create textures from scratch, complete with nodes, fallible textures. Kind of Anything else? Yo, it looks like you're doing this stuff. Does photographic work well with like the selection of kind of surrounds and stuff like that? Yes, right there. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. But again, it's the thing of like, you know, it's like Adobe Photoshop. Like, yeah. 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 It better look good. Like if it's real time, kind of have a little wiggle room. But if it's a static image that you created offline, you, I, I expect it to be really good. Because you have so many tools available to you. You can render in V-Ray overnight or whatever, you know, 20 hours on an image with all the bells and whistles on it. You can then take it into Photoshop. You do whatever with an image, but that real time here is uh, sort of on the whole way. Uh, I've got the wave. That's it. <laughs> cool. So, sorry, I'll, I'll stick around. Uh, thank you.